Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church by the Narrows. I am Pastor Audrey Lukasak. I am the new lead interim pastor here, and we are delighted to have you join us for worship on this day. And we invite you now to join in our opening hymn. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit that we might proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Abba, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading for today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Our second reading for today comes from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them, Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever pass, passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name and all the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
The Gospel for this day for Holy Trinity Sunday is written from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It is delightful to be able to lead worship with you this morning as we begin our ministry together. And before I proclaim the word today, I'd like to just introduce the prayer of intention that I use whenever I preach. This is a prayer that was written by a colleague friend of mine from Cape Town, South Africa, Alan Story. Some of you who have gone to Holden Village may have heard him but it's a prayer he has given me permission because he too uses it uh, prior to each of his sermon. It's another reminder for us of what our time together is all about. So I invite you to pray with me. Spirit of the living God, come now and grow our faith, deepen our hope, come and strengthen our love and water in each of us a desire to be your faithful friend and family forever. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever noticed that when Jesus wanted to gather his disciples and to have a special teaching moment or to have them pulled away from all the distractions and noise, he would oftentimes go up to the mountains to be with them. Back in February, in that time between Epiphany and Lent, it was the Transfiguration Sunday, where Jesus took a few of the disciples up to the mountain, and as Jesus was teaching, he was transfigured. His clothes became dazzling white, and then they were engulfed in a cloud, and there they were joined with Elijah and with Moses, and then the voice of God spoke. This is my son who I love, with whom I am well pleased. And God's voice continued on to say, listen, listen to him. And in another time, we hear in Matthew where Jesus took them up to the mountain to teach them of how to pray and also of sharing of the Beatitudes, ethical principles of how to live the life God envisioned for, the, for all of us to live. And then today, we hear of Jesus in the post-resurrection story when he instructed the women and the other disciples who saw him to go ahead in Galilee up to the mountain. And it was there where Jesus gathered with the disciples, 11 of them. It was after Judas had killed himself, but it was there that he instructed them and reminded them all authority had been given to him. Authority that is not a power over, but one that is empowering of others and an authority that liberates all of us. It was there that Jesus gave the marching disciples to the disciples and he said, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And while Jesus was there, we know that the disciples, some of them came, they all came to worship him, but there were some who were filled with doubt. Makes me feel comfortable at times to know that sometimes I too am in, in good company to know that those times in which we may have doubt. But Jesus again entrusted all of his disciples into going out and proclaiming the good news to all people. 
It is in that time of where Jesus is also empowering them to go to all nations. It was in that early church that we are reminded when he says, go and proclaim the good news and baptize people of all nations, that he was very inclusive and was very diverse in how he saw his vision and his mission of reaching all people of all different backgrounds and cultures. So as we are reminded where, like the disciples, they were on the mountainside and, you know, they were embraced by God's, Jesus' presence. But when Jesus said, go, they knew they had to go back down into the valley, to valley to begin their work. As I was driving here, 2,500 miles from away, I was, went through the mountaintops and saw the different mountains as I gathered closer to Tacoma here. I was reminded of a family I met early on in my ministry serving as a chaplain. It was a farming family and their loved one, uh, this man, this farmer, and his wife and his three adult children came in to meet with the doctor and they had been going through cancer treatment. And they talked about their experience, but they knew that the meeting they were going to have with the doctor to know that there was no further treatment. And the wife and the children, they shared what this experience had been of going through cancer treatment and how they grew closer as a family. And then this wife who had been married to her husband for 55 years, he, she said, you know, everybody loves to be on the mountaintops, to see these beautiful views and think of life, of being wonderful and beautiful. But she said, did you ever notice that on mountaintops, no grass grows. It only grows in the valleys. And again, she reflected, and as a family, they reflected of how they grew closer as a family and also grew in their faith. Like in my prayer at the beginning of our sermon, uh, of my sermon today, we pray and invite God to help us to grow in our faith. Jesus, as he was speaking to the disciples, he entrusted them to go out and to share the good news and to share the teachings that he had shared with his disciples during his time with him. And he empowered them to go and share this liberating word to all people. As I was driving out here over these last uh, many days to get here, I listened to lots of podcasts. And there was one podcast, two podcasts that just really stood out for me as I thought about what it means for us to go and make disciples. One was by Barbara Brown Taylor, and she talked about how people are yearning in these changing times. They are looking for places to be rooted and grounded, and yet the ground under them is shifting in this time. And she said, this is what it means for us to be as church, to help come to be community, to again uh, look together at the lens in which Jesus tried to encourage us to look at this world that God has created us and to find ways to bring love and justice into this world that God has created for us to live. The other podcast was by Surgeon General Dr. Muthi, and he talked about, he does a podcast, but he talks about the difference between cure and healing. He said, our world right now is in deep need of healing. And he said, we are living within an epidemic of loneliness in this time, especially after the pandemic. And at the end of his podcast, he also did a meditation. And he said, what is important for us to do is to spend time with people, especially those who are lonely, to listen and to learn and to love. And he said, encouraged us to reach out to people that we may know and people maybe we haven't heard from in a long time 
and to listen and to let them know of your love for them and how you appreciate them being part of your life. So what better Sunday to have this gospel text and, G and Paul's farewell to the Corinthian community that says that which we incorporate in our liturgy oftentimes. Uh, um, we say in the name of the, our God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life, we are reminded that today on this Holy Trinity Sunday, we celebrate our God who has created us and has given this incredible creation and to invite us to be good stewards of that creation, but also our God who has created us, each and every one of us as beloved children of God and where God knew us even before we were born and where we come together to celebrate the Redeemer of God's Son, Jesus, who came to reveal God's love for us, who brought a message of hope and love and forgiveness and how God envisions us for us to live. But also where Jesus said, even though I am leaving you, I am sending you an advocate, a friend, a spirit, not a timidity, but a spirit of power, love and self-control as a reminder that we are always there with us. So on this Holy Trinity Sunday in which we celebrate this triune God, and even as we begin this journey together of ministry together, we come drawing on our God who has created us, our God whose voice we will listen to, who we will draw on the teachings of Jesus and trying to live out this mission that he has sent us on. And may we not forget the Holy Spirit is with us, the one who will guide us through this process. One of my mantras in leadership as a pastor to be with you is Jesus sent all of these disciples out with different gifts and even with those with doubts he didn't give them a manual of how to do this, but he celebrates each of our gifts of being on this journey in life and entrusting us to go and make disciples, whether that is having coffee with a friend or going and helping a neighbor in need or listening to a coworker who's in the midst of a difficult time or even us as a community, as we struggle together of what does it mean to be faithful disciples, we will continue to be on this journey together, learning to love and to practice good listening. I am so impressed with your um, vision statement of welcome and also of how important you have been working on creating this presence of how do we listen and learn and grow as faithful disciples of Jesus. As we continue on this journey in whatever time it may be, may we continue to trust in the Spirit to guide us and to lead us and maybe even be surprised of what God may have in store for us. And may we not forget these words where Jesus said to his disciples in that final verse of reminding us all, behold, I am with you always to the end of ages. Amen. the sun. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. And so as we come before our God today, we remember all of the ways in which we have fallen short and the, the things that we might need to ask for forgiveness. And so now we take this time of silence to pray. And now receive this word of assurance that God forgives all of your sins and that you are filled with God's love and God's grace. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Let us pray. Holy three, holy, 
one. You call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. And direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick or in need of healing. For Katie Kutsana, her mother Jean, and her sister Joni, for Nancy Howe and her husband Tom, for Randy Holland, for Dorothy and John Peterson for Cal Clark, for Ginny and Maggie Conley, for Irv Stallnecker, and for those who we name to you now. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, we give you thanks for our lead interim pastor, Audrey Lukasak, and we ask that you bless her ministry among us. Continue to be with St. Mark's during this interim time as we trust you for grace during this journey. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. And we give thanks for Joan Torfin and all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith together with these words from the Iona Abbey Worship Book. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all humankind. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of compassion, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb, he ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. 
And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Feel free to share some sign of the peace with those whom you are worshiping with or um, just send a message online. And again, we want to just say how much gratitude we have for the support that you have shown uh, through this, this time of interim. We thank you for your offerings. And if you would like to contribute today, uh, there's a link below. You can feel free to use that. And as always, uh, we receive offering uh, through the mail as well. And now we come to the table for communion. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now would you join me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we come today to receive communion, we do so as uh, along with the whole church. And so as you at home uh, partake today, just know that you are also included uh, as we all gather today to share in this Holy Supper. And we do so by taking the bread and saying, the body of Christ given for you. One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth. We are one body in this one Lord, Gentile or Jew, servant or free, 
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now it's time for our parish life announcements. So we want to uh, invite you this week on Wednesday, June 7th at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary will be a baccalaureate service for all of our St. Mark's high school graduates. And Andrew Larson will be preaching our seminary intern and uh, it'll be just a joyful time to celebrate. So please come and uh, if you're able and, and be a part of that. Also, uh, we want to remind you that next Sunday is our semi-annual meeting with lunch beginning at 1215. And prior to the meeting, um, there'll be our treasurer, our treasurer, Carol Avery, and our operations and finance Steve director, Steve Johnson, who will be available to talk to anyone about the budget, if you have any questions, um, and that will be in between the services. So if you can come uh, in person next Sunday, if you're able to do that, it will be a really great Sunday to come and be sure to stay for the semi-annual meeting. Uh, if you're not able to attend and you'd like to uh, at least view the annual meeting, um, you can do that. It'll be live streamed uh, probably starting at about 1230 and last maybe about an hour. A lot of exciting things happening we want to share with you. So really uh, hope you can make an effort to be a part of that. Last, we again want to welcome our new lead interim pastor, Pastor Lukasak. We are so excited that she is here. We are moving now into our interim time. And uh, that begins with uh, really clarifying our mission and then uh, moving on to looking at who we want as our next uh, lead pastor. And Pastor Lukasak is here to help us in that transition. So again, if you are able to come to our semi-annual meeting, you'll hear more about that as well. And if you have any other, uh, want to know more about what's going on at St. Mark's, please be sure to go to our website and you can read more about it uh, at www.smlutheran.org. And now receive this blessing. May the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen.
Blessed tree. 